Hi, I'm Dr. Robin Koslowitz, YouTube's post-traumatic parenting expert. Today, we're going to be talking about trauma recovery and the concept of experiential avoidance using the nursery rhyme, there was an old woman who swallowed a fly. I don't know why she swallowed a fly. So if you are a post-traumatic parent and you've been wanting to understand some of the psychological terms that your therapist uses, but you're kind of too afraid to ask and you've Googled them, but you just get a word salad, you've come to the right place. At Post-Traumatic Parenting, we talk about all things trauma and all things parenting. Click subscribe below so you never miss another episode. So today we're talking about experiential avoidance and how it can be the root of all our psychological distress. Experiential avoidance, which is really talked about a lot in acceptance and commitment therapy by Dr. Stephen Hayes, is about our desire to not feel our feelings. We're trying to shut off an emotion, not think about an emotion, not embrace an emotion, and, and sometimes counterfactual thinking, trying to make something not have happened by not acknowledging it happened. It's sort of like running on a treadmill. You run and run and run and run and run. You don't get anywhere. So we might numb those feelings with alcohol. We might numb them with excessive shopping, even with running. We might, we're doing whatever we can to shut those emotions off because whatever we can do that shuts off their, that emotion becomes so pleasurable and so important that that becomes the thing we must do just to shut the emotion off. We don't even like it anymore. Someone who needs to go running a lot of hours a day because they're sort of addicted to running, this is about shutting off an emotion. I don't want to think. I don't want to feel. I don't want to think. I don't want to feel. I'll go for a run. I'll get drunk. I'll shop until I drop. I'll eat an entire chocolate cake. I'll take substances right? The idea is not in and of itself that any one of these things is the problem. The problem is that we're engaging in this behavior to shut down something else. And that something else is going to keep coming back, which means we need this behavior more and more and more. So let's think of there was an old lady who swallowed a fly. So there was an old lady who swallowed a fly. I don't know why she swallowed a fly. Perhaps she'll die. So now we have one problem. Old lady's got a fly in her belly. Okay, it's a problem. Now, old lady can accept that she has a fly in her belly and that's kind of yucky and maybe she can drink a lot of water to flush it out and be done with it and maybe she can just accept, yeah, there's a fly. It's going to buzz around in there for a little while. It's not going to feel so good. I, ew, I ate a fly. And then I, she can move on with her life, accept that this happened and move on. But she doesn't do that. There was an old lady who swallowed a spider they, that wiggled and jiggled as it tickled inside her. She swallowed the spider to catch the fly. I don't know why she swallowed the fly. Perhaps she'll die. So now we have a second problem. So we're swallowing the spider to catch the fly. Kind of like, I really didn't like how I was feeling. So I went shopping. And now I'm nervous that I spent a lot of money shopping. But you know what will make me feel better? I could go shopping. Not helping. There was an old lady who swallowed a bird. How absurd to swallow a bird. She swallowed the bird to catch the spider that wiggled and jiggled and tickled inside her. She swallowed the spider to catch the fly. I don't know why she swallowed the fly. Perhaps she'll die. So now we have yet another problem. This is when we add addiction on top of addiction. I just don't want to think. I just don't want to think. I just don't want to feel. I just don't want to think. So we're going to add another problem. And then, of course, there's all the attendant problems. If you're a post-traumatic parent, and you have some addiction, something that keeps you from feeling your feelings, but then that interferes with your ability to be present with your children. Maybe you like to dissociate. And when you're around your kids, you dissociate, you numb yourself, you play Candy Crush, you watch cute cat videos on YouTube or some documentary about some you know obscure crime that happened in the 1980s on Netflix, but you're not actually watching your kids. And you want your values are to be a present parent. But you need to dissociate because you need that to manage your stress because the stress feels intolerable. You see how we're swallowing a fly and swallowing a spider and swallowing a bird? There was an old lady who swallowed a cat. Imagine that. Swallow a cat. She swallowed the cat. Catch the bird. 
She swallowed the bird to catch the spider that wiggled and jiggled and tickled inside her. She swallowed the spider to catch the fly. I don't know why she swallowed the fly. Perhaps she'll die. So then what happens is now I'm nervous about being nervous, about feeling guilty, about not being present with my kids and yelling at my kids and ask, and making them, you know, shut up because I'm trying to watch this documentary on Netflix because I can't feel my stress. But the more I think about how I let my kids down after they fell asleep, the more stress I feel, which means what's our next step? And look how big this woman's and crowded this woman's belly is getting. There was an old lady who swallowed a pig. Her mouth was so big to swallow a pig. She swallowed the pig to catch the dog. She swallowed the dog to catch the cat. She swallowed the cat to catch the bird. She swallowed the bird to catch the spider that wiggled and jiggled and tickled inside her. She swallowed the spider to catch the fly. I don't know why she swallowed the fly. Perhaps she'll die. And maybe that's the stress, thinking that perhaps one day we'll die. So we're stressed about feeling guilty, about feeling afraid, about feeling stressed. And we're stressed about feeling our stress and letting ourselves feel our stress. And we're feeling our stress, so we're dissociating from our stress. So we're yelling at our kids. So now we're feeling more stress. There was an old lady who swallowed a goat, just opened her throat to swallow a goat. She swallowed the goat to catch the pig. She swallowed the pig to catch the dog. She swallowed the dog to catch the cat. She swallowed the cat to catch the bird. She swallowed the bird to catch the spider that wiggled and jiggled and tickled inside her. She swallowed the spider to catch the fly. I don't know why she swallowed the fly. Perhaps she'll die. And that's how it feels to have intolerable stress. Like perhaps we'll die. That's what it feels like when really we can just feel our stress and we won't die. We let ourselves feel our feelings. There was an old lady who swallowed a cow. I don't know how she swallowed a cow. She swallowed the cow to catch the goat. She swallowed the goat to catch the pig. She swallowed the pig to catch the dog. She swallowed the dog to catch the cat. She swallowed the cat to catch the bird. She swallowed the bird to catch the spider that wiggled and jiggled and tickled inside her. She swallowed the spider to catch the fly. I don't know why she swallowed the fly. Perhaps she'll die. And of course... There was an old lady who swallowed a horse. And here comes the doctor. He's going to figure this out now. Now she's sorry, of course. So maybe instead we let, we simply feel our feelings. We let the fly out. We let it buzz around us. Tell us what we're stressed about. Accept our feelings and say, yeah, yeah, I feel a lot of stress. Being a parent's hard. Yeah. I'm still remembering things that happened to me from my trauma and I have flashbacks and they hurt and they're painful, but I can get through them and remain present for myself and with my kids. I don't need to drink to shut out those voices and to drown out that sensation of remembering my trauma. Instead, I can tell my brain, thank you brain for reminding me of my trauma. You're trying to keep me safe. I'm a grown up now. I got it. I know how to keep me safe, but thank you for the memory and you can go now. And then hopefully the memory kind of starts walking away on its own. But ironically, when we reify a memory by trying to do everything we can to push it away, we actually make it stronger. When we drink alcohol to not think, whatever we're trying to not think becomes what we think. So it's our job to accept the discomfort. After we swallow a fly, we just swallow a fly. Eventually, it will process its way out of our body, and that's okay. Don't try to fix the emotional state. Accept it. That's the acceptance of acceptance and commitment therapy. If you're a post-traumatic parent, and this made sense to you, if experiential avoidance is something you've been dealing with, especially as a symptom of your PTSD, welcome. A lot of us are dealing with it. It's something we talk about a lot. If you kind of wished that this episode was a QA and a because you have some questions about experiential avoidance and how it impacts your parenting, maybe you dissociate, you want to know more about that, the best place to interact with me directly is on Instagram. That's where the post-traumatic parenting community hangs out. You can find us at at Dr. Kozlowitz Psychology. You can also find our Facebook group on Facebook. And if you'd like much longer form, deeper dives into these concepts and interviews with experts, please check out the Post Traumatic Parenting Podcast available wherever you get your podcasts. We also have the Post Traumatic Parenting book, which is coming out soon. So keep an eye out for it. Bye-bye for now.